this video is going to be on uh, stabilizers, trailer stabilizers. I've uh, seen quite a few um, examples on YouTube, and um, I thought I'd show you the way that I'm going to go about uh, hooking up these stabilizers on, the, on my trailer. So, um, <clears throat> one thing to determine is uh, the 45 degree angle um, as a rule of thumb as far as stabilizing. So let's go underneath the trailer and uh, take a look at it and uh, I'll show you how I determine the length of the board that I need as far as coming up to a 45 degree angle. Okay? Okay, so we're going to go down underneath the trailer here and see what we have to work with. So there's the frame of the trailer and here is the scissor jack that we've been using. So I'll be taking the tape measure from this area right here and measuring down at a 45 degree in order to determine the length of board that I'm going to cut. Okay, so I'm going to use my speed square that I use for so many different things um, and use it as the 45, set down flat, and then I'll be able to slide this forward to the point that I know the base of my board will set at about 32 inches okay and at this point I'm going to use a little bit more than 32 inches because I'll be cutting off some of the board to compensate for uneven terrain and I'll show that to you in just a little bit The reason I'm going to lengthen that board is because most of the time when I've been camping, um, the elevations levels change on the campsites from none of them perfectly level. And um, so basically as the, as the elevations change, then the angle of the board is going to either become steeper and uh, will change that 45 degree. Now, how important it is to get an exactly a 45 degree um, I haven't I haven't used these levelers before so um, maybe it doesn't make any difference at all um, but I'm going to start out with a 45 degree seems reasonable enough and go from there and see if it works well on uneven campsites ended up buying these on Amazon and they weren't quite what I was looking for. I was looking for something like a recessed cabinet handle or, but I was afraid the cabinet handles wouldn't be strong enough because there's gonna be quite a bit of tension on these. So I opted for these quarter inch D-rings. So if you notice the um, frame on this comes up and it's got a, three quarter inch, about a three quarter to one inch lip that comes out. And I do not want this board sticking out any further to actually puncture or put any kind of pressure on this area right in through here because it's mostly insulation with a wrap around it. So I have cut this board off at another 45 in order to hopefully prevent that from cutting into that. Just a small piece. Um, it would have left it at an angle like so, which is fine at that level. But as the trailer is higher, 
in some campgrounds, it's gonna, it, this, this piece of wood is going to rotate downward. It would end up jabbing into this fabric, which behind that fabric is insulation and then the flooring, the plywood. The board's all cut to length, and I wanted to show you why I ended up beveling each one of the tips on here. And this is how far out from the trailer it's going to set at a 45 degree angle. And yes, that's a yoga mat. They come in handy for all kinds of uses besides yoga. So, as the trailer changes in elevation or height or the, or the campsite is uneven, that would cause this to rotate up higher, which would put all that pressure just on that little tiny tip. So, in order to keep that from causing a problem as this one rotates up. It will still be on that tip, but it's not going to break the end of it off. I think what I'm going to have to do is raise the front of the trailer up, just as an example to see what changes at this on these angles right here. So to come up with the right angle that's going to suit all kinds of different campground levels and heights. I will either need to cut this angle down or cut this angle. Okay, so I've got the trailer lifted about two inches. So now we'll go underneath and see what it looks like with the stabilizing legs. If that makes a difference in angle. At uh, two inches in Height difference of the front of the trailer. You can see that it's starting to kick out right here and rotates this downwards. And the steeper that angle is going to get, the further out that's going to it's going to move this point further out this way. So I'm going to take up, up take it up another two inches, and we'll take a look and see what that does. We have got this now at four inches, and this continues to rotate out just a little bit, and this tip rotates down. So you can hear that in the background, that's my helper. He's my uh, video assistant, hoping we may use this project. He's holding the tape measure right now for me. And then at four inches, you can see the bottom of this is just kicked up a little bit. And uh, so um, I can't imagine six, eight inches, if that's gonna make any kind of a difference at all, it's just gonna lift that a little bit higher onto that uh, tip here, onto this tip, and shouldn't cause any kind of an issue with that tipping forward and out up there. So I would say, I would say we're um, at the point to put the hardware on and strap this thing together and see what it looks like. So this is what the finished product looks like. But I wanted to simulate just how high it could go without the top portion of this kicking out more than one inch so I set a mark here on the fence at on level ground at a 45 degree so it's sitting there flat 45 degree and as this rotates up on that beam rotates up on that beam that mark right there is one inch out one inch out and that's the top of that beam 
So if I wanted to say, let's move that and take that up to eight inches in elevation difference. Let's go up to about here. So from this line to this line here is eight inches. All right, but as you can see, that kicks that top out two inches. Pretty close to two inches out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is experiment with, the, with this and you can see the lines that I've created here. So I'm gonna cut this one inch back and hopefully this will move this back one inch. If I cut this off at this angle, move this back one inch and that will remain on that I-beam without tearing up the fabric underneath. So that's my next my next thing I'm going to do. Hey, good morning. Last night I woke up and uh, decided, you know what, I'm going to change the design. And the new design is going to have a better application. It's going to not only be able to reach at the eight inch height that I want, but it's also going to work really well at a lower elevation. So let's uh, get started. I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble all the old ones and re-lay out, uh, do a new layout for these uh, new ones. And uh, let's see what happens, all right? Okay, I'm going to speed things up a little bit by using my impact drill and uh, we're going to get started on disassembling all the rest of these other stabilizers that I just built. So let's get started. It's just kind of a side note, but um, DeWalt does make this adapter that will go onto your 18 volt uh, power tools, your saws, your, your drills, everything. Um, and back in the day, I bought the, what they call the Fat Boy kit, and it had a drill and um, recipicating saw and all, all this other stuff in it, but then the 20 volt batteries came out so they made this adapter that snaps right in with your 18 volt equipment and then your 20 volt batteries which last a whole lot longer um, snaps right into place and it works great so basically what I decided to do was was rotate this 45 degree So it isn't sharp on the point, so it has a pivot point of this area right here. Okay, we're back underneath the trailer again, and the new design is going to be cut at a different angle. And this angle is going to still set up into the corner of this I-beam at approximately a 45 degree angle. Um, but with the new design, um, it's going to be able to change for um, un unlevel campground um, that's probably higher in the front of the trailer instead of being lower in front of the trailer. Or it's going to be able to rotate and come all the way down to almost a 90 degree.
Okay, we made it to the point we're gonna start putting the hardware on. And uh, so I'm just gonna use my speed square. And from the tip of this, we're gonna come up 12 inches. And put a mark. Use the speed square. For each one of them. I just need a mark on each edge, just one edge, so we can line up our hardware. Okay, at three quarter of an inch. So we're gonna pre-drill our holes. Put a little piece of tape on the drill bit so I don't have to drill, drill too deep. And uh, get started with that. Just going to repeat that on each one of them and um, we'll be ready to put this underneath the trailer and check it out okay there we go hardware is on and it's ready to be installed Okay, there it is. The finished product. Ready to go camping. And once the wife got inside the trailer, and I've only got the front ones hooked up right now, her comment was, wow, what a difference. And I don't have the stabilizers down. I don't have the those stabilizers down at all. It's just the stabilizing legs or arms that I that I made. So that was fun. So this is kind of a preview. I'm going to rebuild this box. This box was originally built for the trailer we used to have and the weight distribution system. But I like to store everything inside here. It's uh, nice and compact and when we go camping the board, the box actually just sits in front of the trailer with it all loaded. With everything keeps it nice and clean and, and uh, no dirt or sand. But um, that video will be coming up soon. 
you know that that build was a lot of fun and it was uh very easy to do it didn't require a lot of equipment a lot of tools a lot of um expertise for sure and basically it can be done on a weekend trip down to one of the big box stores your favorite hardware store pick up a couple of two by fours um and some uh d-rings a little paint and uh some ratchet straps and you too can have the stabilizing legs and um, so far from what i can tell they're going to work great so that was a pretty simple build you can do it too so if you got anything out of this video go ahead and subscribe uh, give me a like and um, there's other videos coming up i'm going to be doing a video on uh, how to silence the water pump or how to make it a lot quieter the water pump in the trailer i'm going to build the um, um, the weight distribution box i'm going to rebuild that and um, there's a couple other ones that are coming up so stay tuned and thank you for watching